It is an exciting experience to perform astronomical observations for the first time, regardless of the object of study or the instrumentation used, amateur or professional. It is, however, good to remember that astronomy is a science, the study of the heavenly bodies. The goal is to understand the physical principles behind the working of the objects under study as well as their characteristics. To reach this goal, the observations must be true to the properties of the objects studied. Observing is the first step in this scientific investigation. It is followed by the elaboration of hypotheses about the observed phenomena the integration of these into a theoretical framework and the use of this framework to make predictions, which can subsequently be used to design new experiments and perform new observations. Thus, it is clear that if the original observations are not true to the object under study, the effect is felt in the subsequent steps. Creating a protocol for observations is an important and complex task, in particular because the observed objects, such as stars or galaxies in the distant universe, are faint and far away. To guarantee that the scientific data can be used for subsequent analysis, it is important to control each step in the observing chain. This starts with a high altitude and isolated site, in order to minimize the effect of the atmosphere and light pollution. Also needed are a telescope and an instrument that does not deform the image of the object under study. Unfortunately, sites are never perfect, and instruments and telescopes do always leave their fingerprints on the data they collect. We need to foresee these effects so that we can measure them and correct for them. This is what is called data reduction. For a long time, astronomers have used photographic plates to record their observations and to perform their measurements once back in the laboratory. However, over the past 20 years, the photographic plates made way for CCD detectors, very similar to the detectors found in digital cameras, for example. They are made of small pixels of semiconductor materials such as silicon, which convert light into electrical signals. These signals are then converted into a series of zeros and ones that computers can read and understand. It is these zeros and ones that are behind different image formats, such as, for example, BMP, JPEG or FITS, as a function of the way they are used to code the information. Today, ever more powerful CCDs are constructed. During the data reduction process, we aim to measure and correct for their imperfections. To make this more concrete, we will follow the different steps of data reduction from a sample of observations done at the Haute-Provence Observatory in southern France. It is data from the planetary nebula in the Lyra constellation, also called Messier 57. The white dot in the center is a white dwarf, the rest of a regular star at the end of its life. The star is blowing away its outer layers of gas. We can observe these in the form of a ring. The diameter is 2.4 light years, which is about 23 trillion kilometers. The ring measures about six arc minutes in the sky, which is about one-fifth the diameter of the full moon. The magnitude of the nebula is about 10 in the V-band, which corresponds to the green. The nebula is not visible to the naked eye, but a small telescope, such as the 80-centimeter telescope at the Haute-Provence Observatory, is enough to perform good observations on this object. M57 was observed in three bands corresponding to three different colors. The blue, B-band, the green, V-band, and the red, R-band. Observations in different filters allow to measure different constituents and to compare their distributions. But first, one has to measure and correct for the imperfections of the CCD detector at the 80 centimeter telescope at the OHP. Similar to all CCDs, there are three effects to consider. First, we must take into account the offset signal that superimposes onto the light signal. The role of the offset is to be able to distinguish between situations in which the detector receives a light signal from situations in which the detector does not work. For example, a broken pixel will not generate any signal, not even the offset signal. The offset signal is easily measured, just acquire several very short exposures, one second or less, with the detector fully shielded from any light source. 
The second effect is linked to thermal motion. At room temperature, the electrons in the semiconductor material are moving around. Due to the thermal motion, electrons can detach from the semiconductor atoms and produce a parasite electrical signal, also called dark current. This current is more important when exposures are longer because the electrons have more time to detach. To measure the dark current, the detector needs to be closed again. This time, however, the exposure time must be the same as the exposure time used to image the object under study. Of course, the dark current also contains the offset. When correcting data for the dark current, they are automatically corrected for the offset as well. Finally, each pixel of the CCD responds differently to a given light signal. There are also dust particles that can more or less absorb the light. So, we must measure the way in which each pixel from the detector responds to a given input signal. This is what is called the flat field. To measure the flat field, one must close the dome to avoid any parasite light source from outside. The telescope must be pointed towards a screen that is uniformly lighted. Of course, the flat field image also contains the offset and the dark current. Also, the flat field depends on the filter used, so it must be measured for each different filter. There is one last difficulty. When lighted by a uniform light source, each pixel will collect a number of photons that varies randomly. This is called the photon noise. It is a fundamental characteristic of light and it will affect all the calibration images, being the offset, dark current and flat field. By repeating the measurements and taking the average, these pixel-to-pixel -pixel variations disappear, leaving nothing but the average signal, which is what interests us. Therefore, it is important to know in advance the type of imperfection to correct, so that calibration measurements can be planned, because if a single calibration measurement is forgotten, be it the offset, the dark current, or the flat field, all science data could be useless. The reduction process can be written in the form of a simple equation called the fundamental reduction equation. To obtain a reduced scientific image, first the dark current needs to be subtracted from the raw image. Then the result must be divided by the flat field in order so that the response of each pixel of the detector is uniform. These are the basic steps of data reduction. In reality, there are other effects for which corrections might be needed. On the detector, some pixels, or even whole rows of pixels, can be faulty. The instrument itself can suffer from optical faults that affect the images. When observing from the ground, atmospheric turbulence will distort images. This latter effect can be corrected using adaptive optics, but that is another story. We will concentrate on the imperfections due to the CCD detector. The first step in the reduction process is to prepare the so-called master dark image. Open all the dark current calibration images acquired at the telescope. Click on the file menu and select import and image sequence. Once you checked you are in the folder containing the calibration images, you can enter the string of characters contained in the name of all the dark current images. In our case, R underscore 45 dark. This will open all the images containing this string in one single operation. The software opens all the dark current images and places them in a stack. That can be easily inspected visually thanks to the cursor at the bottom of the window. In this example, three dark current images have been acquired. Repeat the same operation to open a second stack containing the exact same images. You will use this stack to perform some simple tests and verify that all the images are useful for data reduction process. Use the left stack to reduce the data acquired at the telescope. Use the right stack to perform the verification tests.
Start by optimizing the contrast of the dark current images in order to check that they do not contain any significant faults. To do so, click on Process and Enhance Contrast and normalize all images simultaneously. This operation shows the photon noise for each of the images. Inspecting each image reveals neither any significant differences in the general aspect of the noise between the images, nor the presence of an image with any particular fault that should be removed from the stack. To check this quantitatively, click on Plugins, Stacks and Measure Stack. Some statistics are shown and it can be seen that all images have more or less the same average value and standard deviation, confirming there is no particular fault. Repeat the same operation on the images that were not optimized in contrast. The average values and standard deviations are much smaller than those of the optimized images. This means the optimizing process changes the data. Therefore, during the data reduction process, one must not use these images, but rather the original images, because otherwise the result will be affected by the optimization process. Now create the master dark. Click on Image, Stacks and Z Project. Check that the method of combining is the median. The software will calculate the median of the three dark current images and show the result. Click again on Analyze and Measure. This shows that the new image is indeed the average of the individual images and that the standard deviation has decreased, meaning that the photon noise has been decreased. The more individual images there are, the more effectively photon noise will be reduced. In this example, just three images were taken, which limits the reduction of the noise. Save the master dark image by clicking on File, Save As and Fits. The reduction process can involve many files, and thus it is important to carefully organize these files. In this example, put all the resulting images in a folder called Results, so as to distinguish them from the files corresponding to the images acquired at the telescope. It is also important to use explicit file names, so that there will be no confusion between images. Now close any unnecessary windows and proceed to the next step. The second step is to create a master flat. Like in the first step, open all the flat field images taken at the telescope, click on File and select Import and Image Sequence. Check that you are in the right folder and enter the string of characters contained in the file names of all the flat field images, in this case flat underscore R. Images are opened in a stack. Ten flat field images have been acquired in this example. For inspection, create a second stack with the same images so as to avoid changing the images of the first stack that will be used for data reduction. Start by optimizing the contrast so as to check whether there are no important faults. Click on Process and Enhance Contrast and normalize all images simultaneously. Upon inspection, no significant differences in the overall aspect of the images are seen, nor are there any images with specific faults that need to be removed from the stack. Several faults can be clearly identified. The dark rings are due to dust particles on the different elements on the optics of the telescope or the instrument. There is also a gradient in the background light which can be due to vignetting effects or to the different way each pixel of the detector reacts to the same amount of light. Finally, several rows of pixels are faulty and cannot transfer any signals correctly. They show as white lines. Create a master flat by clicking on Image, Stacks and Z Project. 
Check that the method of combining is the median. The software will calculate the median of the 10 flat field images and show the result. It is important not to forget that the flat field also contains the dark current and that this must also be subtracted. To do so, click on Process and Image Calculator. Select the median image created during the first step and use it to subtract it from the median flat field image. Next, normalize the image to 1. Clicking on Analyze and Measure will reveal the maximum value. Click on Process, Math, and Divide. Enter the maximum value obtained in the previous step and validate. The master flat is ready. Click on File, Save As, and Fits. Take care to save this image in the right folder and to give it an explicit name. Close all unnecessary windows. You have now arrived at the real data reduction step. Open the raw scientific image by clicking on File and Open. Go to the folder where the raw data collected at the telescope is stored and select an image to reduce. Start by subtracting the dark current. Click on Process and Image Calculator. Select the image to be reduced and subtract the master dark. It is wise to close the raw image in order to avoid all possible confusion in what follows. The second step is to divide by the flat field. Click on Process and Image Calculator. Select the image you just calculated and divide by the master flat. The resulting reduced image is shown. Close the window with the intermediate previous result in order to avoid confusion. Also close the master calibration images, except if there are other images in the same band that need to be reduced. You now have a scientific reduced image corrected for all the artificial effects of the detector and the instrument. This image is ready to be used scientifically. Save it by clicking on File, Save As and Fits. Remember to save the image in the right folder and to give it an explicit name. You have seen how to reduce a raw image of an object in a given band. But how do we combine different bands to obtain a three-band color image? Click on File, Import and Image Sequence to open the images of an object observed in a different band. Until now, we have reduced all the images of M57 in the R band. Images of M57 have also been prepared in bands B and V by the same method. The reduced images of M57 in bands B, R and V are shown in the same stack and can be visually inspected. It can be seen that they are not correctly aligned. The stars in the field appear at different positions in the image. So the first step is to realign the three images. Click on Plugins, Stack Reg and again Stack Reg. Select a transformation by translation which gives the best results. The software automatically realigns the images. When we now inspect the stack, the stars all appear at the same position in the image. Now let's combine the three images. First separate them from the stack. Click on Image, Stacks and Stack to Images. Next. Click on Image, then Color, and Merge Channels. Link the right filter to the right color channel, R band for red, V band for green, and B band for blue. Note that in this example, the three filters correspond to the colors of additive synthesis, therefore the resulting image reproduces the object as our eyes would see it.
The data are reduced. They have been corrected for all instrumental effects and are now ready for scientific analysis. This analysis will consist of performing the most accurate measurements possible on these images. These depend on scientific goals, such as the determination of a distance, for example the distance between the white dwarf and the gas ring in M57, or the quantity of light received from a star. We now understand why scientists need to have images that are totally corrected from all instrumental effects, so as to obtain the most accurate measurements possible. For example, if the image is still affected by any kind of instrumental fault, the measurement of the distance between the white dwarf and the gas ring could be false. When observing the distribution of the gas ring in different filters, we can characterize it as a function of its nature. For example, the blue filter shows the distribution of ionized oxygen gas, whereas the red filter shows the distribution of ionized hydrogen gas. We see that the main goal of the astrophysicist is not to obtain beautiful images, such as the ones we can find on the internet and in astronomy magazines, even though we appreciate their beauty. The goal is to obtain images that are scientifically useful and that allow for precise measurements of certain properties such as size, composition or speed. In this way, astrophysicists can better understand the physical principles that rule our universe and the objects of which it is made.